again, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to this marvelous masterpiece of aviation greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Heliborn. Yeah, it's awesome. Hey, it's available now on Steam. I've been playing it for quite some time. I'm friends with the developers. They're very nice, and they've worked on this uh, game for quite some time, and I like it a lot. So let's go over some of these helicopters. By the way, if... Uh, you know, if you if you can think of the game, it's kind of like a uh, you know War Thunder meets helicopters kind of thing, um, and you can transport troops with these helicopters in order to capture points. This helicopter here, some of you might remember it from uh, the TV show Mash. This is the uh, very beautiful OH-135 that can be armed with uh, FAR sixes and also ATGMs. And uh, when the enemy has some uh, positions, like for instance uh, a couple of uh, AA positions, you can come in with these uh, ATGMs and fire them at the enemy. This is a scout helicopter that can stay back from the action and fire these missiles when a helicopter's landing. You know, you can take out an enemy helicopter while it's dropping off troops, or take out enemy stinger positions, or even uh, fire at their uh, AA from long distances without even being seen. So a very effective helicopter in hindering enemy movements and such. Very cool. At the bottom you can see all the sorts of different helicopters you can get for both the Soviets and for the United States, but we're going to try to cover most of them that we can. A few of them have quote-unquote classified intel up in the upper right corner about their description, but this one here is nicely detailed, saying the Sikorsky H-19 Chickasaw was... Uh, was a multi-purpose helicopter used by the United States. So basically, wow, it first was in flight in 1949. So really, just quickly after the end of World War II, one of the first main helicopters for the United States. You can look, I guess these are gigantic stereos here to rock the enemy to death. That, or it's the uh, M1919 36mm uh, rockets uh, armed with two Browning M1919s and 38mm rockets totaling. 132. You can do different types of loadouts on your helicopter as well when you're going into battle. So some of them can fire more, which means you can cover more area and attack positions that are much larger. Or you can go in quick and hit them heavy with a few quick strikes, and you can go up to even the 7.62. Well, that's actually the same, but uh, you can see they're, they're both mounted in kind of the same position. So very cool, very, very cool indeed. And then you can move up to the uh, little banana, as we call it, the, the, uh, the, the mini Chiquita. Uh, the utility helicopter from the USA designed by the Pekoski. Wow, I've never even heard of that. So basically in 1964, 370 uh, units were produced of this. And this is very interesting too. One thing I should mention too is that these are multi-role helicopters here. Uh, you can see how their symbol changes their squares, which means that they go, they, they're go. they basically multi-role in terms of they are the best at swooping in, clearing enemy defenses, and then landing and replacing troops. These are the main helicopters that you're going to see. These are basically main battle tanks of the field, or really of the skies, because they can swoop in and clear out enemy positions. Some of these hold, uh, like for instance, 11 men here, and you can see their durability, speed, agility, and climb rate and such. And the flight models in this game are very nice. I'll show some examples off of that a little bit later. I'll, uh, previously, I've flown in, in uh, Vietnam and even uh, want to go all the way up to Afghanistan. So for those of you looking for a very comprehensive um, type of game that uh, spans the entirety of an entire battle platform, really, the helicopter starting in 1949, really, uh, earliest helicopter I've seen so far, and going all the way up to modern-day helicopters, which we'll get to very soon. Here's the big banana, the H-21, which can hold more men and has different types of, uh, not just Mormons, but Christians, too. But no, it holds more men, and uh, it also has different loadouts, including uh, M-24, uh, the grenade launchers, and uh, rocket pods, and all sorts of other cool stuff. Um, these are really great for taking larger bases. When you're playing, you'll notice that there's different types of uh, bases to capture as well. There's, um, you know, pontoon bases that you can land and troops at to capture PT boats, and there's also smaller bases, and these are the greatest for large bases. The, these helicopters can also drop Stinger missile troops, or IGLA, in, uh, or whatever type of variant it happens to be for the era, for, uh, well, really just man pads for the Soviets. And so this helicopter is very good at swooping in, dropping some man pads, and, and having the enemy have a bad day. We can go on to everyone's favorite, then, the uh, the Huey helicopters here. They classify these specifically as just the UH-1B in this case. Almost looks like a UH-18, almost looks like the 18. But again, ATGMs, rockets, hydras, and you can use these all throughout Vietnam, and I believe even up to modern day as well. Uh, the Huey's still being used, I believe. These can fire uh, the 55, 11, 6 uh, ATGMs that's loaded with, so it's three on the left, three on the right. Very cool, and very nice looking as well. Very nicely modeled. So 
you can see that these are perfect for, again, sniping the enemy from afar and swooping in quickly. The Soviets have some very similar weapons as well. The UH-1D, of course, the famous one here, and uh, the, the uh, comparable, uh, comparable uh, variant to the... Um, to the earlier MASH helicopter, the Little Bird here, which also does carry one man pad in it, so you can quickly swoop behind enemy lines, drop down a, uh, a Stinger missile right outside their base, and basically ambush them before they come out of base. Very nice Cobra here, by the way, armed with a whopping 76 millimeter times, what, four pods? I think this is actually, gives you 132, I think, in total, so 32. Uh, I'm, I, actually, I'm not even sure, I can't even count that high, but very cool. Uh, with the amount of missiles that you get here. Again, good for quick gun runs, and you can even fight enemy helicopters in the sky here. This is your main fighting attack helicopter, attack helicopter, really, as where these are scouts, and these are multi-role or transport helicopters, and, of course, these are more heavier. Everyone's favorite here, the Chinook. Big, bad, and ugly, and it's super fast, by the way. Uh, there is a grenade launcher, or um, uh, I think it actually can be equipped with the... Well, it's an, um, that is a... Uh, that's, your, of course, your very favorite... 50 cal, legendary 50 cal on the back there with M60s in the windows. These helicopters can't fight uh, with the window guns quite yet, but eventually they will have that. That is a feature they plan to add. So, for instance, with the Huey, you can see the M60s out the side and, of course, the 50 cal on the back of the Chinook. So that's something that will be implemented soon enough and making these helicopters even bigger and even better. And, of course, the... Um, the Black Hawk not having any sort of guns on the side, but it does have plenty of missiles, including Hydra rockets and Hellfires as well. And, of course, it even has the 20mm. Uh, wow, look at that. That's uh, that. That's not going to be something that you're going to want to see. This is, of course, a more modern Huey, more modern transport. Uh, there's the two different variances between the MH-605 Nighthawk and the UH-60. Uh, so, actually, this is more I guess I should have said that this was the Black Hawk. And this, of course, is the, the Nighthawk here. So very, very cool to see the differences between these. And a very, very huge number of helicopters, too. We're looking at quite a few, including different variances. Here you have the AH-64A and the AH-64, of course, this being the Apache. And you can see the differences in weapon loadouts. And, of course, uh, the only thing that's making these different differences is the years that you can fight in. So if you're going to ask, can I use a AH-64 in Vietnam, uh, the, qu the answer is no at the moment. Um, it seems to be locked to theater. And of course, the theaters of what you're confirmed so far are Vietnam and Afghanistan, but they do plan to add many, many more uh, theaters of war, which will really make some of these helicopters more useful and definitely cool to see, including the Scout AH-1 Mark I. And of course, I don't even know where some of these come from. You'll see great, uh, you'll see helicopters from Great Britain, France, Germany, United States, Soviet Union, many other countries, Warsaw, of course. Uh, very interesting looking helicopter. Very cool. Looks very fast, too, by the way. Look at the speed on that, some bitch. Even uh, almost as fast as the Apache, though it looks a lot small, um, a lot less fast, but uh, it's all about how you fly it, to be honest, and the. the uh, the elevation speed. Oh, there we go. Everybody's favorite, the Puma. Very cool to see that as well. Very big, big transport helicopter. All right, let's take a look at the Soviet stuff. We'll start all the way at the low end Soviet stuff and work our way up to the meat. All right, here we've got a very light transport as well. Uh, it, it is one of the smallest Soviet helicopters, but can still transport troops. And again, the Soviets emphasizing on multi-role helicopters throughout all of their doctrines. Uh, the biggest Soviet attack choppers of the 60s were kind of multi-role as well. Of course, the the hind variants being very effective in both clearing positions, fighting enemy helicopters, and landing troops. The MIAV, oh boy, this uh, this this may as well be called, uh, you know, oh wow, it looks like an old car from the front with the radiator. But this thing is an endless supply of missiles. It is insane. For those of you who want to shoot down enemy helicopters day after day after day, if you get this, you're going to be firing for days and days and days and days and never run out. And of course, in this game, you can always RTB and land at base dependent on, uh, oh wow, does it actually, I'm wondering here, hold on a second, did you see all the helicopters in the background? I wonder if they change if you choose different types of helicopters. Right now we have Soviet helicopters, oh look at that, it loads, changes the base loadout, there's Ch there's Chinooks over there, and when we look at some Soviet helicopters, look, they change to uh, Heinz and, and uh, TVs and such, wow, really cool. All right, so let's go all the way back, so again, multi-role helicopters and scouts, again, the scouts, the, the, even those user scouts are more small multi-role helicopters, so very cool to see. Uh, MI-2 Europe, 
and that's a Polish helicopter, I believe. Wow, it looks like it's got a big Frankenstein forehead to it with bolts in the side of it. Look at that. An ugly helicopter, but a very cool helicopter. In fact, I shouldn't even call it ugly. It actually looks really nice. It almost looks like a fish, in fact, a very good design for mobility. Here's your uh, MI-8TTV which is loaded. And by the way, I should show some of these other loadouts too. Again, these helicopters also being able to fire ATGMs and transporting men uh, and also Stinger capabil uh, capabilities. Though it doesn't say here airborne eight men, uh, one of them should be, it, it actually will list that eventually. 20 men being able to fit in the MI-8T and also being loaded with, uh, wow, bigger rockets and more rockets and all sorts of pain. Wow, look at this. Actually, what? Oh, machine guns on the side as well. Uh, PKT machine guns. So MI-8TV, uh, MTV, actually, uh, kids, for those of you out there uh, not looking to see Justin Bieber, you're not going to see him here, but what you are going to see, or probably the last thing you're going to see, is 5, 8, DM, one, wow, 120 rockets right there. That is actually the most rockets I've ever seen. I haven't been seeing all of these helicopters yet. They're not all yet implemented, but look at, um, by the way, for those of you who are fans of Wargame Red Dragon, eventually you'll be able to make decks as well, so you'll be able to choose which types of helicopters you bring into battle, so you're going to see all sorts of different helicopters, and um, it'll be interesting to see not historical helicopters in a theater, historical helicopters in a theater for those who want realism, and then, of course, uh, people's personal decks as well. MI-24, first Soviet multi-role attack helicopter, had a cockpit with uh, A-12.7 uh, machine gun inside and wings for rep weaponry. Of course, 250 were built, named the glass after the unusual cockpit from the NATO reporting. Hind is the name of that one. So very cool. Wow, it actually, oh, look at it. It loves you. It's got a heart on it. Oh, it loves you. And it wants you to play with it. It's a very good helicopter, by the way. You definitely pick this one uh, if you're flying in the Vietnam maps. A very powerful helicopter. And actually loaded with waffle. Oh, I see two different types of uh, ATGMs. I did not know it actually came with those. Very cool. Actually, I did know it came with those. And it can land troops, which makes this, this helicopter amazingly powerful. Again, you can clear an area and capture a base all on your own. For, so th those of you who want to be uh, lone wolves, that's the way to do it. Wow, look at the, look at the mean grin the, the uh, MI-24V has given you. Very cool. And again, the same number of men, just different loadouts and different engine power. I believe there might be a little bit of a difference. Yeah, there's a higher durability on that. So, And again, some of these are classified just because some of the descriptions haven't been written. MI-24P. And again, of so many MI-24s, it was so useful. You can see the only thing that changes on the helicopter really and truly is kind of like the rotor placement and also kind of some of the weapon systems and such you can see on the back in the cockpit look. Ah, uh, yes, the MI-28, very powerful helicopter. MI-28 here, MI-28N, again, just uh, being upgraded with different types of weapon systems. And a big favorite here for me, wow, actually, I've never seen this helicopter before. What are you? That is strange. The KA-15. Oh, and there's even a class of, oh, look at this. Well, you're not even supposed to know about this. Wow, what is it, fire nukes or something like that? You'll have to tell me what those are for some of you experts. It's not carry any extra men, but a very fast-looking helicopter. In fact, look at the speed of it. It's actually super fast. KA-18 is the upgrade of that. It seems like it goes a little bit down the line here. But the KA-25, the one that I wanted to showcase here, this is my favorite helicopter, I think, so far, is uh, because it can transport 11 men. It's super fast, and it comes with a lot of powerful rockets, too. You'll have to rely on allies a little bit more to clear out positions, but, man, to be able to drop troops and head back, this, again... This has one more man than half of the 20 men that go in the MIT. So very, 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 very powerful helicopter. And wow, okay, that's uh, ugly as hell. That looks like a horrible Mitsubishi minivan. Wow. The KA-29, again, an upgraded variant of that. But the competitor to the Apache, or even better par perhaps. In fact, you may want to argue that the MI-28 might be a direct competitor, but this even a step above it. KA-29, KA-50, this is what we're looking for. KA-52, and of course, I believe the Black Shark designation of that. So um, maybe we'll see Comanches, maybe we'll see other t sorts of, uh, of um, perhaps prototype helicopters. But for now, look at the difference between these two. A very, very powerful helicopters. High speed, high durability. These are helicopters of your dreams, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And they hi they do have IGLA, air-to-air uh, -air missiles. So for those of you who are fans of air-to-air -air combat and want to see some helicopters that really know how to fight, these are helicopters that can take out the enemy from a very far distance. KA-50, great for ground attack. And, all, well, of course, you can even use an ATGM to hit a, a, an enemy helicopter while it's in the air. But the KA-52, a very good competitor against the uh, Apaches when it comes time to uh, fighting in the air. So this is uh, a very general loadout here. Oh, there's the AH-60 
AH-64D, which is armed with the Stingers times 4 on the wings, you can see, and of course two uh, NATO scouts there that we saw, well, a scout and a transport multi-role. We went over those a little bit earlier. So that is it for the Helleborn overview of the helicopters available. Now, of course, if you're watching this video a little bit down the line, please check out the uh, descriptions and such uh, in the game for more and more of the uh, helicopters that you can fly because they're getting more and more of them and each are a little bit different for each different helicopter look at they just they add some very small thing by the way the flare pods I forgot to mention you can fire flares on some of these helicopters they may not mention it but I guarantee that's exactly what that is it pops it out the side whenever you get a lock on and of course it doesn't completely save you but it does reduce the chance that you'll encounter an enemy missile up the old behind which of course is no bueno 